We are here tonight with thanks to Super Value, who are celebrating 10 years as sponsors of the All-Ireland Football Championship. Willie Joe will be back with us because we're going to be looking ahead to the All-Ireland semi-finals in just a little while. But we want to get one of our very special guests up on stage. He's a regular visitor to Ackill these days. Please give it up for Sean Boylan. <laughs> How are you? Okay. All right, man. Good. Two weeks in a row, Sean. You were with us down in Killarney last week, and you had so many good stories with uh, Kieran Donahue. We thought we go again. Here we go again. Is right. Um, it's um, it was brilliant there with with uh, Willie Joe and 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 uh, Liam talking about the you know eighty nine and but in eighty eight uh, me played them in the semi final. And uh, we were leading by 10 points or something at half time. And this fellow went to town in the second half. We were, we were absolutely steep to, to come through. Do you remember that match? Great game, yeah. Great game. But a, a really interesting thing happened was that um, we went into our dressing room at half time. And at that time, um, it was 10 minutes at half time. You had 15 minutes. And PJ Gillig's father, Aidan, God be good, we died two years ago, is in having a heart attack in our, in our dressing room. He was having them all week, but he didn't want to upset PJ or not go to the match. You understand? <laughs> so you go into your dressing room, and here's, here's poor Aidan, God be good to him now, but having a heart attack, didn't want to upset PJ. So there was a great team talk, as you can well imagine. <laughs> Holy sweet Jesus, you know what I mean? And uh, the irony was, it was actually PJ in the end. He pulled us out in the, in the end that particular day. But it's amazing the things that can happen, and happen then that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen today. And I suppose the other thing was that, um, and the lads were very modest because... Back in the 80s, very, very few lads went to college. Very, very few lads went to college. And um, so if you hadn't got a job, and you had so many of the people in Ireland were unemployed, so many lads from Mayo and Galway and so many places, they were on, they were on the plane, they were gone to America. They were gone from, and it was so difficult sort of to keep them together. And it's something that we shouldn't forget because um, uh, that time at Mayo, like they had played Mead in, in 67 in the All-Ireland semi-final. And uh, Willie McGee, right? So you go, Willie. Yeah. And, um, but this was the turning point to me in Mayo. That was the turning point. From then on, they never, they never looked back. They never let it slip. And um, that must be a huge credit to the people who run the association within the county itself. And this isn't Plomos. This is absolutely true because um, um, the way the lads were looked after. But they set the scene. They set the scene for it. Mm. This is good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> there. The lad you mentioned, Peter Ford, I wonder where the boxing came from, you know? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, he is, he, like, he is bigger than me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Take him down by the knees, is that it? Kneecap there, yeah. Yeah. Dear God, he'll fix yeah. you up afterwards, though, yeah. so it's all fine. Yeah. So I'd say Larry Finnerty's ears will be burning over the next little while. Do you... Uh, do you constantly have a dig at him if you, that scrap didn't start? My life would be totally different. Yeah, well, it was a very volatile situation. It was such a tough game, the first game. Yeah. I think both teams got a feeling that there was something was going to happen, you know. Why? What, what happened in the first game? Well, it was that just that a very sort of physical encounter, a very was, demanding yeah. game. It was and one of the toughest games I ever played in my life. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I suppose, um, in our case, the lads were so young, so many mm. were so young get, getting through, and... Um, you had only three lads from the sorry, 88, 87, 88 time and uh, 1991. Only three on the team. And um, um, to beat Dublin was amazing because we had been beaten 10 points in the Leinster final in 1995. And we led by a point with 12 minutes to go. But um, uh, after the match, this was the irony, was that some of the players from 87, 88 came to me and they said, look, maybe it's time for you to sort of step aside yourself. You're held in very good regard. And um, you've had great success. I wouldn't like people to think bad of you and so on. And I just said, you're absolutely right, but I have a problem. And they said, what's the problem? I said, go and talk to the players and come back to me. And what actually happened was, this is absolutely true. Um, the younger lads who came in felt that they'd win an all Ireland with me. And that's absolutely true. And I remember in January of 1996, Martin O'Connell was saying to Coyler, he said, if we don't book ourselves up, these lads will push us off the team. Yeah. And that's... And it's amazing how lads take ownership. It's a bit like sort of your under-21 team a couple of years ago and the likes of Dermot O'Connor and so on. You know, like, like, 
they just they just take it and they drive yeah. it and that's it changes the course of history and that's, you, that's you also knew how good these young lads uh, Trevor yeah, and yeah. Graham and all these boys, yeah, Tommy, yeah, all yeah, these boys yeah. coming up as well. Yeah, absolutely. So y yeah. Any, any manager doesn't want to leave a team like that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, that's yeah. your team. Yeah, the interesting thing is we won the All-Ireland Minor in 90 and 92. And uh, 92 were beaten in the All-Ireland Final. And we got six players off it. But those lads um, were 16 years of age in 93. And uh, Mark O'Reilly, Ollie Murphy, you know, Darren yeah, Fay, players, all yeah. those lads. But Paddy Reynolds. And it was the way they played when things were going against them. There was just that resolve that was in them. They, they, um, they weren't apologizing to anybody for yeah. being out there, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's really what, that's, that's what changed yeah. it really. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah there were well, it, was, it was a very physical game, yeah. And you'd yeah. obviously done, just on, on that, you'd obviously enjoyed a huge amount of success with those players of 87 and 88. Yeah. When they come to you then having that conversation, like, that's a, not an easy conversation to have. Like, were you disappointed in them that no, that's how they looked at all. us? No, no, I, I, I love that with them. And that, was, that all started back in 1985 when we you know, had been hammered by Leash in, in Leinster semi-final. And uh, I told you last week that I arrived in home and uh, my mother's in the kitchen and six of the players, that probably the legends of the game, Rorky, Mick and Porig Lines, um, Joe Cassis, Liam Hayes, and um, who was the last one? Sorry. Uh, oh, Jerry Mack. And... Um, they're in the kitchen with my mother and they're drinking tea and eating brown bread and jam. And you wouldn't see them with my mother smoking. I didn't know they were coming. <laughs> I arrived in home. And my mother just said, like, well, up the house, you crowd. Sort it out. And that was the night that, as the man said, I won't say the blood was on the wall, but what happened was whatever people needed to say had to be said. And um, where could we go from there? And I honestly didn't think that I was the man and they felt that I would be. And Porygline said, look, put your shyness in your arse pocket. And I said, do you mean that? And he said, I do. And I said, all right. And from then on, the chairs went around in a circle. And I'd say, Kevin, that the windscreen was nearly always clear going out, whether we won or not. You know what I mean? We just, we had, we, we had that direction, but people had taken ownership of it. And with people, you know, when, when young athletes take, when they take ownership, it's insurmountable what they can do. It's just amazing. And, um, and um, you know, Rocky was kind enough to say, if we have Sean around long enough, we'd make a manager out of him. So I'm very thankful <laughs> to him, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> very unlike Colin, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Were you worried at all when you said go and talk to the players that actually the players of 95 might go, actually, yeah, we do need a fresh voice? No, or did you tell them going no, fairly not confident? Not a bit. I tell you, it's just, it's just that um, um, it's, um, when you come from the lads, sort of 87, 88, and the circumstances where they found themselves, like, people talk about Andy today. Like, Joe Castles, it was the day before his 34th birthday that he left the Sam McGuire. Yeah, and he was on the meet team from 1973. When we won a Leinster in 1986, yeah, there were six of the lads um, were over 30 years of age. And uh, they all won an All-Ireland. And that's why, really, um, the birth certificates can be important, but it's what's within the person themselves that can... You know, that's, sometimes some lads have a turn in youth, and that's the way they, that's the, that's the way they are. And um, they just made it happen, and the fun and the crack and the jokes and everything else along the But they knew you want to be serious, the more than yourselves. Mm. Now, was he or not, or was he not, one of the greatest players ever played, Willie Joe? Oh, well, it was super, Without yeah. a question. This, this man was, this man was genius, I'm telling you. I'm saying, like, I'm saying, I'm saying about it because... No matter what, he always had the smile on his face. And you knew he's going to do, he's going to do you the next ball. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, it was a great player. Great, great times. But 96 was amazing, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was, it was an amazing, freak. It was an amazing encounter. But uh, I, was, I, I played against both of Sean's really, teams, really yeah. good teams, yeah. All-Ireland yeah. champions. Yeah. And like, both teams played the same way. Teak tough, uh, moved the ball quickly, monsters in midfield, and always three or four really classy forwards yeah. and that's an awful hard combination yeah. as you said mentally tough no no yeah. quitting them at all and the no. two teams yeah. obviously the personnel was dif different but the yeah. two teams were yeah. a mirror of each other and yeah. I, I can say that first hand because I played against both teams you know yeah. it's a, like they were a credit to Sean and the way you put your teams out but, that but they were, you can, you can they were see never beaten no but you can see it in your Mayo team at the moment like the changes in two years in personnel yeah. of the lads that have come in the confidence which they play with and that comes from observing a team that has won an awful lot and yet 
just haven't fully reached it. And they just feel that they can do it. And like, um, it's really interesting though, you know, the, the contest with themselves in Galway. Like if someone said to me in 1966, it'd be 32 years before Galway would win All Ireland. I remember Mick O'Dwyer in 1986, after they had won the All Ireland, said, what's the second best team in Ireland? He said, Kerry. He met the Kerry subs. Mm. And I remember 11 years later, um, driving down on 1997, Kieran and Sean with me, we're after being in Wales that morning uh, on the boat. And we're driving down by the, by the Tara Towers and Mikko and um, uh, uh, Michal McGarald, Darrow Shea and, um, um, oh, what do you call him? Um, Morris Fitzgerald. We're out for a walk before the, the play Cavan, the All-Ireland semi-final. And Paddy got me good from saying, Jesus Christ, Brian, if we could only get to an All-Ireland final. They'd waited 11 years to get there. So there's no, there's no certainties in it. There's no one to give it to you. And that's what you'd have to admire about your own lads. Yeah. There's, they're not going to give it to anybody. And, you know, Damien will bear me out in that. They're like, the hardest competitor, the hardest ones to beat are Mayo. Yeah. And, like, um, you make it happen. They're not afraid of anybody, and that's important. Yeah. Where did you think you were going into 96 then, Liam? Um, Was there... Like, because obviously there had been such a, like a massive turnover from 89, it was unrecognisable, yeah. that group that went in in 96. Was there, did you have a feeling that actually it was a, that sort of special group? That well, well, we were similar to, um, to Sean and his team. Like, uh, Martin Carney managed that under-21 team yeah. that lost two All-Ireland finals. I, I think it was two, yeah. So you had all, we, had, we were kind of sitting there wondering, at, you're, you're now at 30 and you're wondering, what's going on here? Like, are we done or what's the story? You know, the older fellas... Uh, experience that and you're thinking you know maybe we should step aside or what's and then John Mahan John Mahan came in because I quit in I quit in 95 I said you know I've been up for this now mm. I'll try and um, compete for prima donna you know a few more <laughs> a few more uh, <laughs> nice. try and beg me to come back try and concentrate on the basketball I was 30 now Nathan yeah, yeah. at this stage and I had a lot of mileage on the clock and uh, I said I was thinking about going and John rang me, John Mahan rang me from the Lebanon and said, will you come back? And I said, uh, are, are you a manager? Why are you calling me? And he said, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he said, uh, he said, I'm not manager, but I will be when I get back from the Lebanon. Like said, that. <laughs> no confidence, yeah. So I said, when you get back, give me a call and we'll have a chat. I said, I, I don't want to be making any decisions yet. So John came in and as, as, as Willie said, like Lee Moneen and and, and um, John O'Man, he brought it to another level again of um, physical preparation, mind preparation, attention to detail, and just, he was, because he, he, I had played with him for a short period of time, uh, he, he, I used to talk to him a fair bit as a, as a senior player in the team, and he said, we're going to be the toughest, hardest working team in the country. I don't know how much talent we have, but we're going to be, nobody's going to beat us easy. And I said, I'm not going to stop till we get that done. Well, I think we're in division the three, three at the time, three. and we, we won Division Three, and you had the Kenny Mortimers, the David Brady's, the John Casey's, the James Nallens, um, Colin Mack from In the Road. So, like these fellas grew so David quickly. Morris, Morris Sheridan. So these fellas improved so quickly. Mm. So by the end of the league, you could see that John and the senior players, Dermot Frannick and myself, Larry. Finnerty, Tom Riley, we, we were getting excited and we were starting to roll a yeah. bit. We knew now we were in Division yeah. 3, but like the, the young fellas were flying and they had, they'd given us our enthusiasm back that we needed. We got yeah. that kind of a kick in the arse that we needed to, to, to get back and get going again. So we went into the championship, even though we came out of v Division 3 expecting to win the Connacht title and having a cut at whoever came our way. We really, that, that league campaign, regardless of what division we were in, really stood to us. And the young fellas got, got really good really quick and got, got ready, they were ready for the, the level that we were trying to play at to win a Connacht title and get into the semi-finals very quickly. How tough was it under Mahan, the training? Um. Because uh, what, you would have them running up and down in Betty's town, up and down the sand dunes, I think it was Tommy Dowd. I, I said to him one day, he, was, he, was, yeah. he, he, was, he had me doing extra training, and I loved training, but I was getting very tired and very tight, and I said, John, what are we go like, if I get hurt, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? If I get injured, what are we going to do? And he said... We'll put Pat Fallon in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looked at his stopwatch and said, go. <laughs> you know. So the boys, the boys, the boys would be up in the sport lawn, having their, the caterers would be in, having their dinner after practice. And I'd be still on the pitch at 32, 31, 32, yeah. still running 200 meter runs. 
for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and then I go up for, for dinner and no food. <laughs> so that's how tough he was. And I remember, I remember um, being on, lifting weights with him. I'd have to go and lift weights with him. And then he put me on the treadmill and he put it up to 12 and he'd go off talking to somebody and I'd put it back down to 8. <laughs> <laughs> he'd come over again and back up to 12 and he'd go, get, he'd go lifting himself or something. I'd put it back down again and sure. It was, he was great though now. He was great. He really... He, 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 you're right, Sean, and what, what, what you say about the 89 team maybe giving me all fans oh, and the players a, a be belief that we could yeah. start doing something yeah. uh, real. But uh, John took it to a, another level, and, and I would have said I would I would have said that the '96, '97 team, '98 team would be very similar to this team in in, in the way they apply themselves and the, the effort they put in and the, the sacrifices they're prepared to make to uh, to try and win the All Ireland. I, I heard a story that you had to read bedtime stories to one particular player um, prior to the '96 final. Well, you see, we were in Minute, and I yeah. was I was room with John Casey, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, was he a clerical student, was he? <laughs> we, we were all there. So we had no TVs or anything. We were like, what are we going to do all night? So I, uh, somebody gave me a book on calm and how to be calm. And John was really, he was really lost without the TV. So I, I, was, I was reading the book and I said, John, it says if I comb your hair here, it'll calm you down a little bit. <laughs> so... Says, loving you for this now. <laughs> He'll do anything to win an All Ireland. So I was there half the night brushing his hair. <laughs> secret, see, secret, I get him to sleep. <laughs> so the, the, the next morning, the next morning, we got up and I had the misfortune to be walking down. Can I curse on, on this show? Fire away. So I had the misfortune to be walking down in, in Minute, in the seminary, whatever you call it, down with PJ, PJ Loftus. And the, the head man, is it the deacon you call him or something, is there at the door. And uh, 97... And he, he said to us, you're very welcome, lads, PJ and Liam. I wish you the best of luck today and all that. And he said, did you hear the bad news? And I said, oh, geez, James Nannan's after falling down the stairs now and after pulling his hamstring or something. I said, he, I, we, I said what happened? He said, uh, Lady Di was killed in a car crash last night. And PJ said to him, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so... so the deacon, the deacon kind of looked at it, kind of grimaced and looked at him and he continued on with the story. We said, what happened? She said, she, he, he, she was in a tunnel in Paris and, and, and was killed in a crack, car crash and PJ went, fuck off. <laughs> so your, your man was getting very agitated now at this stage. And, he, and then he said, yeah, the, the, uh, he was killed, she, she was killed. She was with Dodi Alfayette or whatever you call him. He was killed in a tunnel. The paparazzi were following her and, and the car crashed. And PJ said, what the fuck was Pavarotti following her for? It's the morning of an All-Ireland final. Really? Really? All the boys are in, inside eating, as, you know, with their game faces on them. And I fall in the door laughing. <laughs> and PJ after me, what are you laughing about? And I said, Jesus. Oh. So, that was, that was, uh, yeah. that was, that was, a, it relaxed everybody yeah. before the game. I all won with the game, the, the, the game that Liam and, and Willie Job play, played, like to the modern game, they would have fitted in there so well. And um, that, nobody kicked the ball out to you anymore. No, that's all, yeah. We'd, but be, we'd be lost if we don't. No, 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 she'd be <laughs> ever rambling around the field, pick it up all day, you know what I mean? But um, no, it's like at that, at that stage, every free was taken off the, off mm. the ground and every sideline ball was off the ground. So there was an awful lot of physical contact yeah. to it. You know, there was never a chance to get away from anybody. And our lads were always a bit slow and these boys kept catching on them. So yeah. It was but a very physical game in those days, it really was. It was, yeah, yeah it was, yeah. yeah it you'd was, be sore yeah. after every game. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, then. Um, the way, the way lads coped with it then became a 70 minute game. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, and the, the freeze, the sideline balls, it just it changed everything. Yeah. It changed everything. It's a really good game. Yeah. Talking yeah. about um, midfielders, and you mentioned psychologists earlier, we're often wondering on off the ball about David Brady. And, <laughs> you know, you just mentioned that Willie Joe maybe took you under his wing. Like, who took David Brady under? Their wing, 
that I we tried. have the current David Brady. <laughs> I tried, I tried. So you're responsible. Well, I, I tried my best. Uh, I, the, like, DB said things and did things that there's no possible way I could And say. that was just on the radio last yeah, night. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's no, no possible way, but uh, he's, a, he's an awful messer, but he was a right good player. He was, yeah. And yeah. like, again, I played with him at club level and at county level. So we played together for maybe eight years, seven, eight years, and you'd always, you'd always be happy to have him around you. You know, a big, physical, tough man, very good in the air, very, very, very clever at breaking balls to his teammates, um, great tackler, you know, and I, I think, he, to be honest now, he's an awful messer, and maybe because of all that messing, people don't take him seriously as much as they should because people forget that he was a very, very mm. good footballer, you know, and... Um, had a, had a lot of weapons and wholehearted the amount yeah. of abuse yeah. and physical contact. Like I used to say to him, you can't, you, you, like it's not smart to be playing this way all the Just time. Reckless. It's reckless. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to get, you know, it's going to wear you down. And like he was pretty much finished at 28, 29. Like the, yeah. But he, his, his best game was the game, the league final, the time, the time of the foot and mouth against Galway in that league final. Do you remember that mm. uh, bizarre Connacht yeah. league yeah. final? Yeah. You just... <clears throat> The Galway boys were lining up to hit him, and he just said, "Come on, boys, you know, hit me, hit me all you want." And he played very well that day as well. So, but uh, he was wholehearted and a very good player. But that's on the pitch. Off the pitch, it's it's another it's another job entirely. <laughs> just before we leave '96, then, because we we haven't really got at you just yet. I want tears before the the night is over. So the first game, then the drawn game, and the obvious the fluke of a point that Meath got. To, uh, that, was, that was our on. fault. That was our fault. Well, yeah. Somebody should have come out and got it and kicked it into the stand. The, the night before, Colin Coyle said it. Uh, he was going to bounce the ball over the bar. He said, lads, the only... Ha- <laughs> no, the only... The only <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. The only, the only hop of a ball, is it? <laughs> and at this stage now, it's about 90 yards. You know what I mean? That it was, that it was kicked over the bar. Yeah. It was gas and John came out. Could have gone under, it could have been well, a goal just 99% the of the teams in the country at the time were beaten when we went six up. Yeah, yeah. But like these boys had no quitting them, and they just kept coming and coming. And once it's five, it's four, it's three, you start to tighten up. You start going deeper and deeper. It's the same as football, isn't it? Yeah. You start going deeper Panic. and deeper and deeper. We we started giving up kickouts and you know giving up yeah. yardage. And next thing you're under the cash. And do you have to go to a banquet that night? Is it just? Uh, then banquets were, you know, after a drawn game, they were terrible, weren't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. It was yeah. a, it's hard. You want all you want to do is get home, and there was a two-week gap. Sean was, yeah, so yeah, that was one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it, was, but, yeah, um, yeah. it was a long two weeks now because we, like, there was a we we like we knew, like it'd be, it'd be like the build up to the Mayo Dublin game. You know, like you're going to have to be really, really at your best the rumor, the to rumors, win this the game. Rumor, the rumor was out that G brought in a few of the All Blacks. Is that right? Yeah. To, to, to coach for the All Aid. Is that right? Yeah. No, we we um we 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 did have a guy called Hecker Reeves. Yeah. In, in with us, but he, he wasn't. He wasn't at the. He wasn't at the replay. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was in doing physical work yeah, with us and yeah, stuff. He yeah, was yeah. coaching Leicester or something at the time. I think yeah. he had forty caps of the All Blacks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but um, which yeah. of the rumours were unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. Well, you see the two week gap. You see, we'd probably yeah. been better off if it was only only a week. But it was yeah. such a physical game. I think both yeah. teams needed a break. <clears throat> I know. I know. In '88, uh, for the replay after Cork match, um, it was the, the final wasn't played until. Um, the 13th of October, because there was a, there was a, the Tour de France was on in Ireland. There was a, there was a stage of it, and there weren't enough cameras to cover the Tour de France or to cover the match in Croke Park. So it was put back for another week. Yeah. So it was like it was. It was a long two weeks. Yeah. It was winter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Three, it was three weeks. It was, it was, three? It was, it was three weeks. Uh, yeah, was it? Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that. 13th yeah. of October. Oh. Crazy stuff. You, you said there that <coughs> obviously that Mead team, as everybody knows, were, were such a tough team, a teak tough team. Really, really good team though. Very, but, but, but brilliant, just on the brilliant forwards. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the scrap side of it then, was part of that you wanting to go out, I'm not going to leave this up, <laughs> was that part of the Mayo wanting to go out and show, you know what, even though we're a young team as well, we can stand physically well, I, with them? I, I, don't, I don't think that was the issue in the first half. The first game, or the first game was a very physical game as well, and yeah. I don't yeah. think either team backed down. No. Um, we were more, we, 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 we was, it was tense, Nathan, going into the game, but we were very concerned about the quality that Sean had in his team, and like we were, we were, we were a very good defensive team. Porrick yeah. Joyce and Michael Michael Donnell and the boys would tell you that as well. Uh, Derek yeah. Savage, that we were a good defensive team. We were yeah. a big athletic team, and you know they, they're scrutinising games now. We kind of played a, a, a blanket defence in those days as well, without anybody really because we had to against these guys <coughs> against against Damien's team because they were so talented as well. Yeah. And the Galway team, 
and the Mead team were very similar in, yeah, in the type yeah. of quality players yeah. that they had. So, we, Colin McManaman we, McMahon, McMahon would come back down and pick mm, up the ball. Yeah. So he carried all day. You know yeah. what I mean? mm. And we, we, we used to funnel back a lot o o under John, and we were very aware of how, go how good how good Sean's forwards were, and that was a big concern of ours. But we, we, we did say, to be honest, that if a row breaks out, that we support each other. Now, there's no question about that. <laughs> <laughs> but people ask me, people say to me, uh, lads, would, would you do the same again? I would. Like, mm. I, have the, uh, like, I have the utmost respect for Sean and the two teams that he won all Ireland's with. Like, and I was you know, lucky enough to play and compete against... The, to, play, to play and compete at that level against those type of teams, it's, it's exhilarating. That, that's, when you're doing all that training, oh, yeah. that's all yeah. you want. And, and that was great. You, you, obviously, you want to win. But um, we, we, we did say that. But like we, we, it, it, was, it was on a knife edge. You, 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 knew, you knew it was going to be tough. And you, you knew it was going, that we had to play really, really, really well to, to win it, you know? With that replay, um, Tommy Dow probably had the best game that he ever played. Yeah. And uh, James Horn had an extraordinary game that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. He scored some great oh, points. Five yeah. or six points. Yeah. Uh, like I, I said it before, I, I, I said on the cooler box, after I got sent off, I was sent off after three, three, three and a half, four minutes. Um, I was never as proud of, of a team in all my life as, as, as those lads. They, went, they, mm. they rolled up their sleeves and went at it. Oh, know, yeah. Pat, Pat Tannock came in at a great game. Huh? Are you not devastated? Well, I was for a while, but you, you, have to, you can't sulk all day. You have to say... You know, really? Oh no, you have to yeah. try and help the team. Like I was very vocal at halftime in the dress rooms. I was talking to, <laughs> I was talking to John and the management team and, and, and trying to help out. So I, I, I was kind of half knocked out, to be honest with you, for a while. Anyway, I was a bit dizzy from the... From the, the pummeling. The, the, I think it was David Brady that was hit me, Sean. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, funny, the funny thing is we actually changed our jerseys for the replay. Because we looked at, when we looked at the video and... Uh, there were lads who were always incredibly good at giving passes. And there was three of them in particular. And I realized that there was a problem. And uh, two of them were colorblind. And whatever jerseys you had, they never saw the red at all, right? So some great passes were given to Mayo. And yeah. uh, so we decided we'd change, we'd change the jerseys. And um, it, like, I know it's only a small thing and you win by, you win by a point. But like, they're the little things that you look at. Yeah. And another thing, we talked about, because Coiler, you know, got a pretty bad re reputation. I don't know where he got it from, but yeah. anyhow, that's the way. It, but, you know, the funny thing is, in the, in the Leicester final against Dublin, he had an amazing game. And um, after the match, he was complaining about his knee. And um, he was there, and he was feeling at the knee, feeling at the knee. Ten years earlier, he had an operation on the knee. And wasn't there a hook left in the back of his knee? And all that year, all that time. And if he had the operation on it, he'd be definitely out for maybe six weeks. And uh, our team doctor at the time, it was a good chat about it, but maybe it might settle, sure, it's been there for 10 years, right? So um, the first train that Colin Coyle did between the Leinster final and the All-Ireland semi-final against Tyrone was on the Thursday night. So he played the match, and because he was so good in the, in the Leinster final, Tyrone kept the ball away from him altogether, and he was just, he was just sitting there. In, in the, so we always felt, Liam, that um, you know, when he came to the final then, because he didn't train between that and the final, that he probably wouldn't have been able for the full match the second day anyhow, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. He was burnt out after three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he gave it his all. You never thought when the lads said they were colourblind that they weren't just having you on and that they had just ha played a load of bad passes? Uh, yeah, they didn't want to lose their place. Yeah, yeah well again, again it's, 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 it was like the first day playing against Mayo because um, you know, we had been beaten in the final in, in 1991, beaten mm. in 1990, having to win it in 87 and 88. And, um, Oh, uh, in many ways, because the match is against Dublin in 91 so on, in many ways, lots of teams liked you and lots of people, you wouldn't have been the flavor, flavor, flavor of the month. And I remember uh, 10 days before um, the All-Ireland said, there's something I'm missing here against Mayo, the first day. And on the Tuesday night before the match, it dawned on me, and I called Tommy Dow, Tommy, Tommy Dow is the captain. I said, listen, Tommy, I said, Tommy, there's something I want you to do. And I told him what I wanted to do, and I said, I want to tell the lads. So, you know the way at the, at the match, you have um, the warm-up, then you have sort of the pageantry, you meet the president, and then you have the parade and so on. 
I realized on that Tuesday that Mary Robinson, this was her first time as president that a Mayo team was in the All-Ireland Final, that when we come to the team meeting her, the place would go absolutely mad. And if you're not, if you're not ready for that, you could just be shell-shocked. And um, so come the day of the match, and um, the president comes out, and Tommy down meets her, and I, I said to him, make sure, Tommy, she knows you're from Dunderry. Now, you, normally when you're meeting the president and you're introducing the people, you come along with the player and you say, well, this is Conor Martin or Mark O'Reilly or Darren Fay. Tommy was laid back. He said, this is Conor, this is Reilers, you know, <laughs> this is Fay's, or you know what I mean, yeah. and so on. And he had gone through, like, you know, Conor Martin was, even though his mother from Mayo, he wanted to win all Ireland, bring it back to Belive, or Mark O'Reilly, Summer Hill, he wanted to bring him back. Darren Fay, you know, only 19, wanted to bring him back to Trim. His father and his uncle, they all played for me. Martin O'Connell, legend in the game in the county and so on. And then it came to the president. Just give me a hand for a second. And the president shakes hands with Colin Coyle. And Coyle was there and he won't let the hand go. <laughs> and she's, she, the other way she used to give a little bow. And it sort of went silent. And Coyler says, how are things at home? <laughs> <laughs> Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ Almighty. And that sort of, like, so it didn't matter what was said afterwards when, when she went to meet the Mayo players yeah. and so on. But it's funny, you may say these things don't count or whatever. And, but the little things can count. Like, like the Thursday after that final with yourselves. Oh, it's the name of God. I didn't know where to go. Because you weren't, you know, I said to Tina, listen, we'll go out and get something to eat. She said, Sean, that's my wife. You're not, there's not a county in Ireland you're welcome in. <laughs> I said, we go to Dublin. She said, why do you go to Dublin? I said, you can get lost in Dublin. All right, so where do we go? We said, we go to Hoth. And we went to Hoth, and we pulled into the harbour uh, in Hoth. And the older men here would remember Lara and Des Foley, who both, both played for Dublin. And they were great hurlers and footballers. They were legends in the game, one to all arts with Dublin. And they were farmers from the North County Dublin. And Lara pulled in the car beside mine, and he gets out of the car the same as you would out of a tractor. And he comes over and he throws the big arms like they were huge arms. Congratulations, Sean. Crowd of gossips. Tina, I've seen more of a jostle in the queue going up to Holy Communion. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it, but it's funny how, you know, and we ended up staying talking for an hour and a half. And the reason we ended up t talking for an hour and a half was because, he said, poor Mayo. Imagine losing the rose, well, he said. <laughs> 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 what a thing to say. You know? and like, but like, that's the way life goes. But like, it's, it's funny that, um, uh, I remember talking to the lads after that match. Like, we'd won, a, we'd won by a point after replay. And um, the, lads, the lives would never be the same again. And, um, and it is a massive thing. And people would say about the number you win. It's not, it's just, it's that just actually winning one. Like, I remember the final, I mean, they beaten 50 and 51. 51 by beaten by Mayo. Yeah. And uh, semi-final by Cavan. And, um, like, it was... Um, Oh, there were things that you'd never, you'd, you'd just never, you'd never lose. And you always want to see your team win that. And um, when, it, when it happens, as it will happen, as I'm telling you, and there's no better year than this year, it will happen. Like, you know, it is fierce important that um, you're ready for it, you enjoy it, and you make it, you know, like, we have great moments talking about, like, t talking about all the times we were beaten all over through the years. Like, I played inter-county hurling for Meath, for 21 years, two last in League Division Two, she won nothing. But the friends are still there, and yeah. the crack and the lies are getting better, Nathan. That's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's what I always tell them back at the office. Look how much time we spend talking about Mayo already. Imagine what we'd be like when we win the All Ireland. <laughs> you will win it. It'll be glorious. You will win it. We are here tonight with thanks to Super Value, who are celebrating 10 years of sponsoring the All Ireland Football Championship. We want to get another boiling up on stage because one of the reasons Sean was so good to come down this evening was uh, you could double up and visit the family as well. Your son Kieran is living here in Ackill, playing with the team at the moment. Come on, join us up on stage. Come on. <laughs> Do you recognise him then from the pubs around Ackle? I do, yeah. He's been down a good few times, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Kevin's a good twice. singer. <laughs> Who says that? I've heard that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Superstar, signing autographs. But yeah, he's the big dog now, all right. <laughs> oh, no, no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? His cousins are here, you're a bit embarrassed now. Isn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been living down in Ackle? Um, uh, I've been coming to Ackle since 2006, but down here most of the time, uh, the last seven or eight years, so 
probably part of the furniture for better or worse at this stage. And you're playing with the team? Yeah, I'm doing my best anyway, yeah, so we're... Um, what level we're are you at at the club, moment? No, we're junior at the moment, but um, I suppose we're a proud club and you know, yeah. it's, more than, uh, it's more than just titles, you know, it's more about uh, who you are and what you are. And like the lads were talking about, what you take away from it as much off the pitch as on the pitch, really. Yeah, and uh, someone saying this new club has only built in the last year or so. Yeah, only, only new last last year and a half or so. So yeah, we're very proud to have it. Um, we had much before. We were proud of it, but what we have now is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you're playing with the Mayo Juniors as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to because uh, I met your dad at the Connacht final, which like, not to go over these things. You were absolutely robbed. Yeah, <laughs> were they the score wrong? Yeah, the scoreboard said you were a point behind. Yeah. Where you're actually two points behind. You kick the point to level it up. Everyone's waiting for extra time. It's only last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I suppose the more than you saw the Limerick lads with, uh, with Kilkenny in the semi final, that's the way sport goes. Like, oh, um, be bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point being bitter about it now. Like, you know, spill milk. <laughs> you must be pretty proud of them, even when you. It's not a me jersey, but it's. Some might say. It. Even better. I, was, uh, <coughs> um, I just know. The, what I know about Kieran is just. I know he was incredibly. incredibly uh, proud to wear the Mayo jersey and to represent them in, in, in championship. It happened them last year, it happened them this year. And um, uh, the one thing in life, um, you know, you love to think that you've given your kids their independence and so on. And um, anybody who would know him, he's incredibly independent. And um, if he decides he's going to play or whatever he's going to do, he, he, he'll, do he'll do that. Now, um, Try and get a straight answer out of him now. That's a different thing altogether. <laughs> I remember after that match in, 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 um, oh, in Galway, going into the toilet with Conor Coonan from Cork, like your story. He said, Jeez, this is great. They were six points down. They've come back. You know, they, they've got a draw and so on. And it was terribly disappointing. You came back out of the, the, the no disrespect, Damien, the Galway junior captain was... You would have been presented with the cup. I said, Jesus Christ, what's after happening? That's the quickest extra time I've ever seen in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that, but that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, but it's, um, I, I'd have to say that um, I remember um, they played Ross Common one night in, in, in Castle Bar and meeting Willie Joe and Martin Carney, a few of the lads, and they put their arm around me. They were delighted for him that, you know, that he was fortunate enough to, to score a goal and everything else. And, um, you know, um, to play any county is it's incredible. And, um, for a county that has been so good, and I see Marty Mark McNamara out there now, I'll tell you, and his family have been so incredibly good to Kieran and all the lads here. Um, I won't say, like home is nearly second home to him now, you know, at this point in time. But, um, the, you know, the lads here, are, they're great footballers. And um, the problem again, can be getting lads together, but it's amazing what they can do and how they will do it. And um, I'm delighted that he's very much part and parcel of it. How difficult is it? Kieran, to get 15 players together? Uh, like everything, it's as difficult as, uh, as you make it. Uh, the challenges we'd have here would be naturally that economically, a lot of boys work in Dublin or in Galway or work away. There's a lot of people in the construction game. So it can be difficult at times. And anybody who's around during the summer, it's mostly the tourism uh, or hospitality. That's the kind of game they're in. So it's naturally long hours. So. If you're looking to train or you're looking to do stuff like that, it can be, it can be difficult. I know if Eugene's here, he's probably not too happy with me at the moment. <laughs> but I'll be back from next week with the bank holiday over anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I suppose your greatest challenges are your greatest strengths as well in that you have to work so hard to get here or to make the effort to be there and to put on the club jersey that when you go out and represent the parish and you represent everybody, you know, you're going to go, like David said, you know, you're going to have that resolve and you're not going to be beaten and you're going to leave everything you have out there. Mm. And if you do that, there's a lot of guys will, will say that maybe you haven't really lost anything in the first place. Listening to some of the stories over the last month or so as we've been travelling around and your dad telling some great stories, and particularly last week in Killarney with Kieran Donaghy, down yeah. there, and I came away thinking it must have been great crack as a young lad growing up in the Boylan household because Donnie was telling the story of your dad's magic hands fixing his knee magically in an international rules store, and Donahue then had this routine of, so the Kerry team would stay in Dunboyne, or stay up in Dublin before every big game on the Saturday night, okay. and he would get up early on the Saturday morning or Sunday morning, drive down to your house in Dunboyne, go in, have the cup of tea, then the two of them would head down to the room, 
to be a rub of the knee. <laughs> and magically, Donny, he would appear in Crow Park and generally inflict pain upon Mayo, unfortunately. <laughs> But well, it's that's, even that's not totally correct because I get a I get a Snapchat at half seven in the morning. Has she the brown bread made? <laughs> 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 so he pulled me out of the bed to go and collect them. <laughs> yeah. By the sounds of it, there was a lot of cups of tea in your house with a lot of great people flowing through. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, always, house, it's yeah. always been like that. I remember um, it's amazing how sometimes your biggest enemies on the field of play can be your best friend in your time of need. And um, when uh, Kieran, um, oh. Landy Kieran. Um, oh, McDonald. Kieran McDonald. Um, on the Tuesday night before the All Ireland final in, 19, in uh, 2007, he pulls a hamstring. And I get a phone call at 10 o'clock at night for Kieran McGinney. Half a minute later, I get a phone call from Paulie Joyce. The same, the same story. We just see him. And he arrived up about 2 o'clock in the morning, right? And um, it was just. That was the camaraderie that's there with the lads who play against you. If they're in trouble, they want to see you, they want to see you play. And, um, uh, and he ended up, he was able to, he ended up being able to play as, yeah. as it turned out. And um, <coughs> That's incredible that McGinney and Joyce yeah, want to see right, this yeah. player be able to go and perform on the biggest day. That, that's right. And um, because he was such a class act, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, I still can never for, figure out why sort of Mickey Morn that he taken Dublin apart in the All Ireland semi final at full forward, mm. and he puts him out of wing half again and saying, Oh, look, get him near the mixer, get him near the mixer. And that's the way it's the things what might have been as well. But again, it's more that's that's camaraderie thing. And I remember seeing it home years ago in the clinic, it was um, Go were playing at Tipperary in the All Ireland final, and Colin Bonner and Nicky English were in one room, and Tony Keady got be good to him, and Brendan Linsky were in the other. And the problem I had was Liam Hayes, who was playing for us. <coughs> Liam was there as well, and he was a journalist. And trying to get the lads in and out without Liam seeing them, <laughs> because you know, both teams playing selected, both teams fully fit, do you know what I mean? And like, <laughs> the truth of the matter is that no matter how well you feel, you always feel you could be that little bit better. And if you thought somebody might be able to do something for you, Jesus, I wouldn't mind seeing him. You know what I mean? And that's it, it's not yeah. it, Liam. Oh, yeah. And that's the way it goes, and, and that will never change. And um, it's funny when you talk about the science that has come into, into Gaelic football now. But you see, it always was an art form, and it was incredibly scientific. It was the only game in the world that you can attack the ball from anywhere, front, back, side, anywhere, you know what I mean? And it's just an amazing game. And um, the levels like that nowadays, even at club levels, how much more you've brought it on. Sometimes it might be as enjoyable because it's so, so much is, is thought out like the way it is, and it may seem like negative. But suddenly when the lads, you know, talk to Damien before the match, throw off the shackles and have a cut at it. My God, what they could do, they'd mesmerise you. And that's, that's terrific to see. And, you know, was I proud to see him playing in county? Wow, delight. Absolutely delight. And he's a great footballer. But he's a tramp. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's a column, he's a column coin, you know what I mean? Like, you can't help it, you know what I mean? That's really, well, it must be from his mother, you know. What I, mean? <laughs> I, I feel we have to let you respond. <laughs> huh? I don't get caught too often. <laughs> That's the main thing. That's the main yeah. man in you.